January 31st, St. John Bosco. In his life, the supernatural almost became the natural, and the extraordinary, ordinary. These were the words of Pope Pius XI in speaking of that great lover of children, Don Bosco. St. John Bosco accomplished what many people consider an impossibility. He walked through the streets of Turin, Italy, looking for the dirtiest, roughest urchins he could find, and then made good men of them. His extraordinary success can be summed up in the words of his patron saint, Francis de Sales. The measure of his love was that he loved without measure. John's knowledge of poverty was firsthand. He was born in 1815 in a small village in northern Italy, where he was reared on his parents' small farm. His father died when John was only two. His mother and her three sons then found it harder than ever to support themselves. And while John was still a small boy, he had to join his brothers in the farm work. Although his life was hard, he was a happy, imaginative child. Even as a boy, John found innocent fun compatible with religion. To amuse his friends, he learned how to juggle and walk a tightrope. But he would entertain them only on condition that each performance begin and end with a prayer. As he grew older, John began to think about becoming a priest. But poverty and lack of education made this seem impossible. A kindly priest recognized his intelligence, however, and gave him his first encouragement, teaching him to read and write. By taking odd jobs in the village, and through the help of his mother and some charitable neighbors, John managed to get through school and find admittance to the diocese seminary of nearby Turin. As a seminarian, he devoted his spare time to looking after the ragamuffins who roamed the slums of the city. Every Sunday he taught them catechism, supervised their games, and entertained them with stories and tricks. Before long his kindness had won their confidence, and his Sunday school became a ritual with them. After his ordination in 1841, he became assistant to the chaplain of an orphanage at Valoco, on the outskirts of Turin. This position was short-lived, for when he insisted that his Sunday school boys be allowed to play on the orphanage grounds, they were turned away, and he therefore resigned. He began looking for a permanent home for them, but no decent neighborhood would accept this noisy crowd. At last, in a rather troubled-down section of the city, where no one was likely to protest, the first oratory was established, and named for St. Francis de Sales. At first, the boys attended school elsewhere, but as more teachers volunteered their time, classes were held at the house. Enrollment increased so rapidly that by the year 1849, there were three oratories in various places in the city. For a long time, Don Bosco had considered founding an order to carry on his work, and this idea was supported by a notoriously anti-clerical cabinet member named Ratazzi. Ratazzi had seen the results of his work, and although an Italian law forbade the founding of religious communities at the time, he promised government support. The founder priest then went to Rome in 1858, and, at the suggestion of Pope Pius IX, drew up a rule for his community, the Society of St. Francis de Sales, or Salesians. Four years later, he founded an order for women, the Daughters of Mary, help of Christians, to care for abandoned girls. Finally, to supplement the work of both congregations, he organized an association of lay people interested in aiding their work. Exhausted from touring Europe to raise funds for a new church in Rome, Don Bosco died on January 31, 1888. He was canonized in 1934 by Pope Pius XI. No modern saint has captured the heart of the world more rapidly than this smiling peasant priest from Turin, who believed that to give complete trust and love is the most effective way to nourish virtue in others. A personal love of Christ developed in his own youth was the source of the deep zeal for the young which characterized St. John Bosco's work. There is nothing as precious as a soul. St. John Chrysostom asks, What is equal to that profession which is concerned with directing the soul and forming the mind and character of the young?